we're kicking off this episode with another one of my excursions. And today, we're at one of Perth's seawater desalination plants to find out how an increasing amount of our water, that is our drinking water, is being made. And that's what this episode is all about, water. Perth Sea Water Desalination Plant was completed in late 2006. It produces 45 billion litres of fresh drinking water a year, which is around 17% of Perth's water supply. Daily production is around 150 million litres. What's even more incredible is that there's another desal plant to the south of here that is capable of producing double this amount. It's amazing the lengths we're going to to make drinking water. And don't get me wrong, I think we're very lucky to have the know-how and the facility to do so because Perth would be in a lot of trouble without it. But it gets you thinking, what more can we be doing at the household scale to reduce our water use? And what alternative supplies are available to us? It's fair to say that I get excited about a lot of things, but water is one issue that I'm particularly into. And there's a number of things we're doing on this project to minimise our use of water and to get the most out of it. Now, all in all, we're aiming to use less than a third of the typical Perth scheme water use despite sustaining what will be a beautiful, productive and shady garden. I'll show you what we're doing. So the rainwater tanks are the most obvious thing. There's one for each house. Here in front of our place, a 20,000 litre tank, and that's taking water or rainfall off the entire roof, around 200 square metres. Uh, and this will supply us with rainwater for all our internal purposes, plus garden taps for about eight months of the year. Uh, and then for uh, those dry summer months, we've got mains water as a backup. It's a, uh, a dual supply system in that we use the rainwater going through a filter for all the taps and for the showers, but the rainwater to the toilets, washing machine and, ga and garden taps uh, won't be filtered just to take the pressure off that filter. Uh, we'll have landscaping in front of here, so native grasses, this beautiful little silver princess, LED uplighting onto that, so it's gonna be a beautiful entry statement right at the front of our home. So we're down the side of uh, the back house, which is our place, uh, and this is the grey water system uh, interception device. You would have seen uh, earlier in the build process, we put the dual plumbing in, so we could drain the grey water separately from the toilet and kitchen water. And today, we're putting in the pumps and the filters and all the pipe work to get that grey water out to the garden. And we've got grey water on both the houses. And that grey water, which is around about probably three to 400 litres per day, per house, will be used to irrigate around about half the garden area. Uh, and it's ideal for things like fruit trees and shrubs uh, and all of the uh, plantings in and around both houses. Grey water diversion like this is really quite straightforward provided it's done and thought through at the beginning of the build. Um, so in terms of cost, it added about $1,200 per house for the additional drainage pipe work. Uh, and then the grey water system itself for the pumps and the filters and all the irrigation line is about two and a half grand for supply and install. Uh, so all up is probably around about $4,000 uh, for the complete works for the grey water system. But for me, that's really worth it because the main thing we get, other than saving water, is that we get a regular supply of water that we can use for irrigation every day. It's an unrestricted source. <laughs> We've also installed a bore. In fact, it's right here. That goes down about 30 metres into what's known as the superficial aquifer, which gets recharged every year with the winter rainfall. Now that'll connect into this main line, which runs all the way down the trench that the guys are installing. Uh, and from this, we'll irrigate things like the vegetable garden, the big fruit tree trellis system, as well as have a source of top-up water to the grey water systems for when we're away. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about bore water. Uh, it does need to be managed responsibly, but it's one of the great things about Perth and the Swan Coastal Plain is we have this wonderful resource being bore water, and it's a much better option to use that rather than relying on precious and constrained scheme water for things like backyard food production. Whilst we're taking groundwater on the one hand, we're also making sure that we recharge it by directing stormwater back into the soil. For example, the overflow from the rainwater tanks goes into a large soak adjacent to the bore. Here we're using a modular drainage system made from recycled plastic, which is really easy to install. 
We've also kept paved areas to a minimum and instead gone for permeable surfaces like the gravel driveway. Again, we've installed a recycled plastic cell that makes the surface suitable for vehicles. Even the water from the carport is directed into a native damp land soaked feature to make the most of the drainage water whilst infiltrating the soil. Water efficiency inside the house is also a priority. We've chosen low flow showers and tapware and a really cool toilet with an integrated hand basin. So when you flush, you wash your hands with the clean water that refills the system. Essentially, the water gets used twice. At the end of the day, landscape water use is the big one. It's around 40% of the water use of most Perth homes. So we've done everything we can to reduce that. Well, firstly, we're not going to be using any scheme water uh, outside of the home. Uh, we have the alternate water sources that I've already gone through. Um, but when we do water, we'll do it as efficiently as possible. So firstly, we've hydrozoned the garden, that is we've grouped plants together based on their common water needs. Most of that is low water use plants, including all the native landscaping that once established won't be watered at all. We've also improved the soil to hold on to moisture, we've mulched, uh, and, uh, and very importantly, we've chosen very efficient irrigation. We've got drip line irrigation uh, that applies water right to the, uh, the roots of the plants. Uh, and how we schedule that is how we decide to run and for how long uh, the irrigation run times uh, that will be programmed to be as efficient as possible. It's a common misconception that industry uses all the water. Uh, in fact, 72% um, of water used in Perth is by residential customers. Of that 72%, um, over 40% is used in our gardens, so it's the single biggest user um, of, of water in Perth. What Josh does is really challenges the status quo. I mean, there can be these um, ideas out there that it's too difficult to do this or the regulations won't allow you to do that or this won't be cost effective. So things have got to be both economically and environmentally sustainable. And I think that Josh's house kind of puts those two things hand in hand, which is great. Look, I know we've gone the whole hog here and I hope it's not too overwhelming with all the integrated systems, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm a bit of a water nerd and that's what this project's all about, showing what's possible. And if people just take some of these ideas and put them into practice in their own homes, we'll be making a big, big difference. For a fact sheet on the Josh's House water efficiency initiatives and water system design plans, go to joshshouse.com.au. In the next episode of Josh's House, I finally get to show off the landscaping and our new garden that I just adore. Right, clap. I'll try it again. That was a ripper. That's the one.